Hey guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. I have another LED for you, and I promise this is probably the last one for the Super at least, unless something revolutionary really happens, because this is pretty much, we're at the end of the road for LEDs with this thing. So, if you remember the last time I did LED headlights on this thing, um, I put a bunch of different H4 style bulbs in this now broken uh, H4 projector style housing. This is just like a $20, $30 projector style housing off eBay. Nothing special, but it does have V-plus bulbs in there, which are really good. They were sponsored at some time in the past, but this is not a sponsored video. But those bulbs were given to me, but I do really, really love them, and they performed really good. Um, so, a lot of people say, oh, well, it's not a true projector. You're going to blind people, this and that and that. So, I went out to try to find a projector housing, and what I found was this guy. I got two of them. These are pretty expensive at least for poor man mod standards. Each one of these is like 130 or 150 bucks or something like that. It's pretty pricey, so it's like well over $200 for two of these, which to some people might not be a big deal, but for poor man mods, that's a pretty big deal, and um, kinda surprised myself that I actually bought these. But these have seven projectors in them. Um, it's got high and low beam, so true projector housings, and uh, I currently have this setup that you're looking at right now installed in the car. So we're going to compare these two to find out which one is actually better. My projector style housing with a super bright H4 LED or this pretty expensive LED projector housing. Um, we're going to look at the cutoff pattern and we're also going to look at overall brightness and just how good it is. So let's go over to the Supra. It's already installed and let's take a look at it. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt your normally scheduled broadcast to bring you another petrol box unboxing. I know, why is that so funny? I know some of you guys love this and some of you might not, so I have a timestamp right here to where you can skip ahead to skip the petrol box unboxing. I don't recommend that you do that though. This is a good time, we have a good time doing this. There's some awesome things that come in here, so I recommend that you do stick around, but I understand if you don't want to, so skip ahead if you feel free to do so. But if you want to watch this awesome petrol box, I encourage you to do so. And if you want one for yourself, I'll have a link in the description down below. So with that being said, let's unbox the petrol box. What do you think we're going to get this time? A shirt. Well, that's because I already know what the shirt is. Yeah, I kind of already know what the shirt is too, but I don't know what else comes. Thanks, Chaz, for the spoiler. Yeah. Ooh, more Jay Leno stuff. What is this? Lemon or banana? Yeah. Those are my two guesses. Jay Leno Eco Wash, scratch free formula, wash, wax, and protect. What does Eco Wash mean? It's the perfect solution to access to water. It's the perfect solution if access to water is limited or you're trying to limit water use. So I guess this means you don't need a whole lot of water to do this. So that's good. Um, I want to smell it first. Yes, the smell test is very important. If it smells amazing... Well, I want to smell it first. I'll let you smell it first, but if it smells amazing or smells terrible, that means it's good. And the last Jay Leno product <laughs> that we saw on here, which unfortunately I think I deleted the footage, I licked it because I thought it was maybe accidentally Robitussin. It's on my Instagram. And it was not Robitussin. It was indeed Jay Leno's car wash, but I licked it for science just to find out. What's the scent? Banana? Mm-hmm. I love banana. Liquid bananas. Mm-hmm. It smells like banana Laffy Taffy. That's what it smells like. That is 100,000% what it is. Banana Laffy Taffy. Smells amazing. So, is this water free? Like, do you just spray it on? Maybe. Safe for use with lightly contaminated surfaces. Surfaces? Surfaces. surfaces. <laughs> Shake well. Avoid spraying on a hot surfaces. Indirect sunlight. Working small areas at a time. Spray the panel generously. Allow for a few moments. So this is like a detailer. That's why it comes with this. So you take this, you take this off, throw that cap over there, and now you have some liquid banana detailer. Why couldn't they just call it detailer? I don't know, but it's Jay Leno's Eco Wash, and I'm excited to use it. Hey, if they want to see the video, it's on my Instagram. Okay. 
That is terrible. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I think this is my favorite part of the petrol boxes. You get these wooden coasters that are wheels. Let's see what else we have here. Drift Bunny decals and accessories. 15% off with Petro Box Coupon. Drift Bunny decals. I'll have to look that up. Oh, I will have to look that up. I think that's what it says. Drift Bunny decals. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a sticker. I guess this is a it's Drift Bunny decal. Bunny. This reminds me of like... This reminds me of like anime slash Invader Zim. Let's see what else we have here. Drift Bunny decals and accessories. 15% off with Petrobox Coupon. Drift Bunny decals. I'll have to look that up. I will have to look that up. I think that's what it says. Drift Bunny decals. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a sticker. I guess this is a it's Drift Bunny decal. Bunny. This reminds me of like, this reminds me of like anime slash Invader Zim. Yeah, I was thinking Invader Zim. I don't know if I will rock this on the Supra, but uh, it is interesting. I just hope the audio is going to be okay for this because it's on a different setting. All right, next on the Petra box is a Drift Bunny air freshener. It's got two different signs, pretty cool. And I do like that all the petrol boxes come with an air freshener. And we also have to test out the scent. I smell it. What do you think it's gonna smell like? I think this is gonna be like, I don't know. I don't like I'm thinking like, a, like an apple or like a fruit punch kind of thing. I wanna smell it. Don't sniff it. Wait. Don't sniff it. Oh. I've smelled this smell before. Is it juicy fruit? Mm. Extreme sweet tarts. That's what it reminds me of. Hmm. Like the chewy sweet tarts? Mm -hmm. That is exactly what this smells like. Chewy sweet tarts. Mm -hmm. Something. Interesting. I wonder what scent they call that. Oh, it's supposed to be a turbo. Yeah. I didn't realize that that's what it was. I thought it was supposed <laughs> to be a stomach. <laughs> what it smells like? Sweet tarts. Oh, we got a candy. We got a candy. I want to eat it. You don't like coffee. <laughs> it's a coffee flavored candy. <laughs> I want it. Here. You ate it last time. I guarantee you're going to put it in my mouth and you're going to go. <laughs> Oh yeah, put it in your mouth. So you don't like it? That's really gross. Can I have it? She doesn't like, she wanted the coffee candy, but she doesn't like coffee. Yeah. It wouldn't be bad if I have like caramel in it. Well, then it wouldn't be coffee. It'd be coffee caramel. Nope, that's gross. Mm -mm. I can't, it tastes like black coffee. It's not bad, I just can't do it. Tastes like coffee. And we got a Petrol Box Magnet, Subscriber of the Month, James Spencer with his awesome Camaro. I do love these Camaros. Look at that. Props to you. I can't afford that. Oh yeah, the smoking tire, Matt Farah. Did you want this shirt? Yes. The smoking tire. Is that even a question? I'm sure most of you know the smoking tire. Pretty good YouTube show. It's a YouTube show. Smoking tire. And there's one more thing. The lost art of high performance driving. How to get the most out of your modern performance car. I guess I need to read this because I suck. Yeah, it's a whole book. But not only do I suck at driving, but I suck at reading. So I guess I won't be learning how to drive. I'm gonna put or something. That is good though. That that's something real good for the bathroom, if you know what I mean. Yeah, put that in the magazine rack, and you know while you're uh, while you're dropping the chocolate boys and at the water park, you know, read up on how to drift or drive whatever's in there. Okay, clutch. 
Mm -hmm. The clutch pedal is the optional one in the bunch. If you have a typical manual transmission car, you know all about the clutch pedal. Mm -hmm. If you drive an automatic, you may or may not know how to use the clutch. Yes. You know how to use the clutch. But not very well. But that doesn't matter if you're driving an automatic. And if you drive a semi-automatic with paddle shifts, you don't need to worry about the clutch either. Since the clutch is all about shifting, and it's that, and that's a big topic on its own, it gets its own chapter. Huh. Interesting. I'll have to read into it. Chapter if I can seven. figure out how to read. They didn't teach me how to read in college. Oh, babe, I need this. Good. Chapter seven, shifting. Mm hmm That's what I have right there. See, I don't need that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this petrol box unboxing. I sure did. I always do. I love getting these every month. Got yourself a smoking tire t-shirt, a driving book. You got some banana car wash and air freshener. It's always a good time. I highly recommend the petrol box. And uh, if you want one for yourself, link down below. And now back to your normally scheduled broadcast. All right, we have the legit projector on the passenger side. My projector housing with H4s on the driver's side. Now, this is not a simple bolt-on uh, headlight for this car. The heat sink on the back of this is so big, you either need longer screws to extend the mounting face out, or you need to do a lot of modification. I just chose to go with longer screws, but doing that, you have to fine tune the whole headlight because uh, you have longer screws everywhere. So if you tighten it, the wrong way, it could be angled to the left, angled to the right, angled up, angled down, so you gotta fine tune it. It's not the best. You can't really modify the bucket of the headlight. It just won't work. So you either need to modify the heat sink on this to make it fit in your Supra, or use longer screws. And I usually just use longer screws. So let's turn this on and take a look at the wall and see what they look like. All right. So as you can see, this headlight, just looking straight on, looks a lot brighter, which this is that blinding effect that some people talk about. It looks a lot brighter, which when you look at the wall, is a little bit brighter. But that one has a much better cutoff line and it's a little more focused, I think. Okay, so the left side, which is the H4 with projector housing, definitely looks a little brighter. It's got a hot spot in the middle, but I don't think it's as focused. This is the passenger side light, just the passenger side with the seven projectors. And as you can see, it has a very nice cutoff line. It's a little bit dimmer than the H4, but it has a very nice cutoff line. And I think this is gonna avoid blinding people. Now this is just the H4 housing. As you can see, it is very bright and concentrated in the center, but there is some scattering. And I think this is gonna be that blinding effect. So this is more of a spotlight, I guess you could say. It's definitely, you know, the light is very heavy up front, but there is a lot of scattering. But the projector has a nice crisp cutoff line. There's the two. The H4 definitely adds a lot more light, but it is scattering all over the place. So that's just the passenger side. And then adding the H4, very scattered, very scattered. Just the H4 again, and then the projector. Here's just another angle for this low beam comparison. As you can see, the H4 is scattering on the ground. It goes up high. It's really scattering everywhere, and that's that blinding effect. The projector on the passenger side, just straightforward, nice crisp cutoff line. I'll block each one up individually so you can get a better idea of what they look like. Just the projector, nice and crisp. No, there's nothing on the ceiling, not really much on the ground. It's straight out in front of you. I think this is the better choice, even though it's not as bright. And there is just the driver's side of H4. Very bright in the center, like a spotlight, but there is a lot of scattering, which people hate. Now let's look at high beam, shall we? Uh, flipping forward and see what happens. All right. So as you can see, they both have a very similar effect. 
they add more light up top. You know, it's a high beam, so it just adds another layer of light a little bit higher. So here is just the projector on the passenger side. Once again, nice crisp cutoff. It's a little bit higher. Um, this looks like it looks good right here, but out driving this car, the high beam is a little too high. I guess I just need to aim it down. Um, but when you're driving, that's like really high up for some reason. It's weird. It always seems like the high and low beam are too spaced apart. And there's the H4 again, just a freaking blast of bright light right there, but it's scattering all over, which that's not a big deal for um, high beams because no one else should be looking at you with your high beams on anyway, or you shouldn't have your high beams when other people are driving. But not as focused, but it is super, super bright. And then there they are together. It's close, especially for the money. Okay, now this is a tricky one. They both have their pros and cons. Um, this one is definitely brighter. It is more concentrated. I think you're gonna be able to see more driving at night down the road. I've been driving with this setup for a couple weeks now, um, trying to really get a feel on which one I like more. I definitely feel like I notice this one more at night. This one has better coverage and a much better cutoff line, and it's not gonna be blinding other people. This one's gonna help you see more, but it's gonna irritate some people. And this one's a lot cheaper. So, it's, it's a really tough call. This, this setup right here, it's like 40 or $50 for the bulbs, and then another like 40 for both housings. So for right around $100, possibly less, you can have two very bright projector style LEDs um, and you would be perfectly fine seeing at night, but you might get flashed, um, which can get you in trouble. This, on the other hand, I believe they're like 130 a piece. So for well over 200, you can have this set up. It's not gonna be as bright, not as much as a spotlight as this setup, but it's gonna be a nice crisp cutoff, which is safer, um, and it's probably not gonna get you in trouble, and it is DOT approved this one is not. So I would say if you can afford it, I would do, I would run this headlight. If you can't afford it, then this is still a great option. And you know, for really dark times and you know, back roads, I have this light bar down here. So this is an okay situation for me. I'll just use this as my low beam. And then when there's no cars around, I flip this light bar on down here and yeah, it's like lighting up the world. It, both are really good options. I would say, you know, dollar per dollar though, it's really hard to beat this setup. This is bright. It's, it's gonna let you see at night better than the factory headlights for sure. This is pretty expensive, um, but it is DOT approved and it's legal. So it's a really tough call, but I think I'm going to stick with these in my car, even though the, the other housing for this is broken. I think I'm going to stick with this setup. Uh, it, some people like the look too. Um, my girlfriend doesn't like it. She thinks it looks like a spider because of all the projectors in it. But I think I'm going to swap this one out and put the other projector in. And another thing with this car, if you have a Supra, the way the LED works is it requires two powers and one ground. So one power for the high beam, one power for the low beam, and then a common ground. The way the Supra is from the factory, there's a common power and a ground for the low beam, ground for the high beam. And since it's LED, it is not reverse polarity. You can only have it hooked up one way. So you need this $30 harness to make it work in this car, which is not hard to install. You just connect it to power and plug in a relay and it works, uh, works flawlessly. If you don't have that harness, this headlight just will not work in the Supra. So I'll have a link to everything in the description down below. I have a link to these LEDs and the housings and these LEDs and even the harness. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something. Um, I hope I'm helping you out with the purchases in your future uh, so you can get the best deal and what you want out of your car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You probably won't see another LED video, at least regarding the Super for a long time. So yeah, let's see you next time.